Let's make this one trip we will never forget. Okay, I'm stood in the bushes at perhaps the spookiest event that I've ever been to. Uh, I'm here with Tom Heaton um, and we are talking about Until Dawn. Uh, it's a very cinematic game. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, it is very cinematic. Uh, and what we were trying to do right at the start of, of making Until Dawn was make a playable horror movie. That's our vision, if you like. Uh, and that means the starting point was to, was to go and watch a load of movies, classic 80s and 90s horror movies, uh, movies like Scream, Friday the 13th, I know what we did last summer, uh, and, and kind of just get the whole atmosphere of those, look at the techniques of how they scared people, how they, uh, you know, uh, made such kind of thrilling movies and work out how can we make a game that does the same, that, that gives you that cinematic experience uh, but which you, the player, can play. That was the kind of challenge we came up with. Would you say that you're kind of aiming then at a kind of broader demographic, a, a demographic of people who enjoy horror movies? Um, is, is that who you're aiming the game at? Yeah, if you enjoy horror movies, we think you're really going to like Until Dawn. You know, we're, 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 we'll, we'll take it, that, that's the kind of, that's, that's your entry point really. Like horror movies, you're going to really like this game. Okay, um, tell us about the, uh, the decisions that you're making on the way, because you use the DualShock 4 in quite a specific way in the game, don't you? Uh, yeah, at various points in the game you use the, the dual shot for. The, the, our, our kind of rule on any design decisions, on anything like that was what serves the purpose of, of making the player feel like they're in uh, a horror movie. Uh, so that, that's how we decide to use it. So there's a great point which you probably played today where there's a character hiding in the shadows uh, and they have to keep completely still and at that point, we ask you, the player, to complete, keep completely still as well, because the dual shot controller has great motion detection, and we can tell if you're keeping still. And if you don't keep still, then you'll be caught, or the next bit of the uh, the next bit of the game will unfold. That's one of the ways we're using it. We also use it um, uh, to to pick up objects and inspect and look at them. We we we, we use it uh, to close doors uh, and bolt doors, and it's all very simple stuff. It's not complex motion detection. It's not gestures or anything like that. It's very simple stuff, and we're trying to make a connection between you and the character in the game, what the character's doing, you're doing. Okay. Do you have? Um, I mean, from, from the choices that we were saw from when we tried the demo, it's, it's quite often it's run or hide. How meaningful do the choices get? The choices are very meaningful, and they're meaningful because whatever you choose to do, the game branches around that. So sometimes, uh, what we're showing today, we're showing an action sequence. It's fast, and you have to make choices under pressure. And it's the sort of choices that you see in a classic chase. Um, in, in something like Prom Night has a great chase, or Scream, or, uh, or I Know What You Did Last Summer. You know, the, 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 these chases, they're very memorable bits of the, the film, and, and, and as you're watching it, you get to a point where you think, don't go down the stairs, going down the stairs, man, it's slow to go down the stairs, and it's dangerous. And we're giving you that choice at that point, we're saying, okay, what would you do? Do you want to go down the stairs, or do you want to keep running? For those sort of action choices, we have to keep it quite simple, but it, they have consequences. Every choice has a consequence, and you get different sequences play out. You affect the story later on. And then we have other sorts of choices in Until Dawn. We have big, far-reaching moral choices. We saw some of that at Gamescom, where you have to choose between one player and another player, and we give you plenty of time. It's a big dilemma. You really have to think about it. So there's a range of choices, and they're meaningful. The game constantly branches, constantly branching in big ways and in small ways, so that your story uh, is, is unique. It won't be quite the same as anyone else's story. That's one of the big ideas behind the game, that you choose, the game branches, you create your version of the story. Okay, um, with uh, with so many different choices, I mean, we only had like, two choices at a time when we were playing the demo. Do you get more than that, or do you have to keep it, the number of choices down so you can kind of maintain that cinematic speed? It's not about the cinematic speed, it's about the player being able to do stuff. Originally, we did have more choices. We decided to go with two choices on screen at a time because otherwise it's a bit too much for the player. And this really polarised things. It really made you think, is it this or the other? And it, gave, it meant that we could apply time pressure, keep you on your toes. Uh, you haven't got long to make the decision. So yeah, two at any point, but they come thick and fast. 
Okay, you talked about uh, branching stories and, and, and constantly making decisions. I mean, one of the main features and one of the main uh, the points of the game is is the permadeath. You know, you, yeah. you, you can potentially keep all characters alive or yeah. you could potentially yeah. lose them all. Uh, why did you decide to go with that direction? What was, uh, what was the choice, the design choice behind that? What it was, we looked at horror movies, inspiration for horror movies, and we noticed that in horror movies, when people die, which they do quite a lot, it being a horror movie, they, they never come back. You know, when they die, they're dead. They don't pop up in the next scene and give you another go. They're really dead. So we said, we have to have that in our game because what we're trying to do is get a playable horror movie. Dead means dead. And then we kind of scratched our heads and said, well, how are we going to do that? And that's when we came up with, 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 with the branching idea. So absolutely, and it really makes a difference to how you play in the game. Because if you've got someone like Hayden Panettiere, uh, or Brett Dalton, and those are very attractive characters. You want to keep it alive because you like Hayden Panettiere, for example, and you know that dead really means dead, then everything matters. Every choice matters, and you know we are going to kill people. We can't possibly, you know, we don't really want a game where players get a lot of a lot of characters to the end of the game. You want it to be like a horror movie where only one or two survive. So we're not scared of killing characters at all. We will do it, we can make it quite difficult because of that. We think it's unlikely that many players will get eight characters through to the end on the first playthrough. So yeah, it's all about, it's all about that dead really is dead. And there must be an awful lot of permutations. I mean, how many, like, if you can say, how many different endings are there? How, many, how much re replayability is there going to be from, from the variety of different endings? There's a ton of different endings. And it's, not, it's very difficult to put a number uh, on the number of endings because there's so many permutations that you can get and it can, it can pan out in so many different ways. Um, the, and so the replayability is huge. And we've seen, we've seen from uh, our user testing that, that players are very keen to go back, replay, what they've played, make different decisions, see how things pan out, and they will get a different story. They'll get different scenes, or scenes happening in, a, in different orders or with different people present uh, as, a, as a result of what they choose and as a result of their actions. Okay, one of the things that we noticed while we were trying the demo, um, we both played different paths, we both had completely successful actions, you know, every, we didn't make any mistakes, put it that way. Um, but one of, in one of the playthroughs, um, we were captured, uh, I won't go into too many details for spoiler reasons. One of them we were captured, and in the other we weren't. How are you kind of signposting the right and the wrong for the player, or is there an element of a kind of luck or r randomness to to, the, to events? Uh, we use very very subtle signposting, uh, and and the reason we do that, and it, the, the area you're talking about is very subtle. You, you, I reckon very few people see it on the first viewing. The reason we do it is if we make choices too obvious. Uh, so that people can read them too much, then everyone chooses the obvious choice. Uh, and we get that in a situation, you know, one of the first examples we came up with is uh, do you split up or do you stick together? You know, it's your classic uh, horror movie trope and you go, don't split up, that's crazy. So we put that in the game and then we find everyone sticks together because everyone knows the rules. You don't split up, why would I split up? I'll stay together. So then we have to go back and make split up a little more exciting, a little more enticing. Maybe um, if you split up, you can do things quicker. Maybe you can get the things you need. Um, so we try and balance out the choices to create little dilemmas. Uh, but we think we're fair. You know, the consequence, you might not be able to tell what the consequence, immediate consequence of the choice is, but we think, if you think back over what happened, you'll go, oh yeah, that's reasonable. Or maybe there's something in the scene that you missed because you weren't quite paying enough attention. Maybe that was happening. Okay, so where are you now in terms of the development? What's left to do? Uh, well, we're, we've got a team, super massive, very talented team, working very, very hard. Uh, we're polishing things up, we're, we're testing it, we're making it as good as we can be, as it can be. And uh, an ETA? Uh, we aren't saying anything at the moment other than 2015, and if I say any more than that, then marketing will come and drag me out, beat me to death. Okay, on the last line then, your favourite horror movie then? My favourite horror movie is Halloween, actually, uh, by John Carpenter. I love it. It's quite old school now. It's extremely creepy, and it's kind of the original slasher movie. It's great. I love it. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Good luck with the rest of the yeah, project. Thank you. Cheers.